All right, so I just got done uh, replacing the pickup coil on this uh, 2000 Polaris Sportsman. I thought before I put it back together, I'd actually run through the uh, ignition system test flow chart here. And this uh, process could be similar for a lot of other vehicles. Um, obviously, some of the resistance levels and such will be different, but let's run through it real quick, okay? So we have condition, we have no spark or in intermittent spark, replace the spark plug. I'll also throw in there that you might want to just uh, verify the gap on your spark plug. Sometimes, you know, if you just drop a spark plug, uh, it's going to close that gap just enough. Um, so we've done that. So we're going to disconnect the black wire at the CDI module to isolate the ignition from the kill system. Okay, so let's take a quick look here on this particular machine. When we're talking about the CDI module, we're talking about this black box back here. And um, if I were to follow the black uh, wire up from this jack, it would be right here, okay? So then what they're going to have you do is they're going to have you bump it over. <clears throat> if you have spark, let's just kind of zoom in here on the book. If you have spark, uh, then basically you're going to test the ignition switch, uh, the engine stop switch, the speed limiter circuit for shorts and grounds, check all connections for moisture and so forth, okay? So if you don't have spark, we're going to move on to the exciter coil or the uh, stator and the pulse coil, which is what I just uh, replaced. So in order to do that, you need to uh, remove this jack or this plug rather on the uh, CDI module, which is right here. It's got a little thumb, uh, thumb uh, depression. Okay, so for this next test, uh, we need to take a quick look at the uh, wiring diagram because it actually gives you the wire colors and the, and the uh, resistance. Okay, so we're going to test the uh, pulse coil or the trigger coil first. We're going to go white to white red, and it's supposed to be 97 ohms. Okay, so just a little uh, disclaimer here. I didn't put a, uh, a uh, Polaris trigger coil in. I went with a, you know an aftermarket. So I'm actually getting more resistance. Okay, so you need to identify on the plug itself, white, and then white with a red stripe. And I'm just going to use these little pin leads uh, because my tester leads won't fit in there. And I'm using the original uh, leads on my own meter because the cheap ones, the alligator leads I bought on eBay, actually add resistance. So they're not very good. Oops, that just dropped out. And you, what, you can't really hold on to it with your fingers. I mean, you could. The problem is, um, if there was no connection, you may end up getting a, a connection with a higher resistance through your body. So you need to clip one on at least. And then I'm going to touch the other lead here. Okay, so we're at 129.5. And we're supposed to be at uh, 97 ohms, but again, I'm assuming that's because I went with a, um, uh, you know, an aftermarket. So, so what I did, uh, let's uh, real quick. Oh, we do need to test white to ground also. So you need to identify just the white wire here. Okay, and you shouldn't get a connection on that. This is the other part of the test to see if you're grounding out somewhere. Okay, so then you take your, your other lead, you find a known good ground, something not painted and probably not covered with mud. Okay, and we're not getting a connection, which is exactly what uh, it should be, according to the uh, manual. So that was the trigger coil test. Real quick, while I've got it here, let's just take a quick look at uh, the old trigger coil. And if you've watched the video, you've already seen this, but you can see it was actually hitting the stator, which is bad. Okay, so I'm just going to touch that one off to this, and then this. And we're getting 50 point, about 50 ohms. So that was the indication. Actually, when I tested it in the machine, it was a lot less. It was like 28 ohms. Um, so that was the indication to me uh, to start looking at uh, the pulse coil. Okay, so while we have this uh, ECM 
jack out, we're going to test the stator. What they're calling it here is the capacitor charge coil. So we're going to go red to black red, and it's supposed to be 19 ohms. And then we'll go red to ground. Okay, so again, you need to identify red to the black wire with the red stripe, which I believe is right there. And again, you want to, you know, you don't want to hold these on with your fingers. And you don't want them resting on metal either, obviously, but that could throw a wrench into your results. And let's see what we get. We're supposed to be at 19 ohms. Just going to touch this one on here. So we're at 20.1 on the stator. So that's good. A lot of times these books too will say like plus or minus 5% and this particular one doesn't. So, Alright, so right now, um, you know, I know that uh, my trigger coil is uh, higher resistance than what the book specifies, but I also know that it's been replaced with an aftermarket, so I'm not real concerned about it. I know the machine runs also. Okay. All right, so that was this block here. We just tested the stator and the trigger coil. So now we're gonna move on here. We're gonna check the coil ground. Okay, so basically it should be the ground in which the, the ignition coil is mounted on should be uh, zero to 0 0.2 ohms. Um, so it basically should be a good ground. So we're, te we're testing the ignition coil for a known good ground. And uh, the ignition coil on this machine is right here okay and this these it actually grounds with the two bolts that mount it and they're having you test it to the engine because we want to make sure we have a good ground you should have a bad ground somewhere it may not be the mount here it may be a bad ground between the engine and the frame or something like that so all right let's see if we can get this in the shot here I'm going to take the top bolt here Try to clip it on. Now I'll just hold it. Okay, I'm going to just press it tightly against the uh, mounting bolt. And I'm going to come over here to a clean spot on the engine. And I'm at 0 0.3. It's supposed to be 0 to 0 0.2. There's 0 0.2 right there. So. It looks like we're good. So we do have a, a good ground on our coil. Okay, so that basically eliminates the uh, possibility of a bad ground on the coil. Now we're going to actually ch test the coil itself. Okay, so they have a primary and a secondary, and I'll show you what that is here real quick. Um, if we remove this blue and white wire, uh, it's right here on the, on the coil itself. Okay. So this uh, spade that comes down off of here, we're going to test a lead to it, and then we're going to test a lead to the bolt that mounts it. Back it out here so you can see the resistance. Okay, so I'm testing the spade. Yeah, I've got 0.6. It's supposed to be uh, 0.3 to 0.5, so I'm a little off there. Okay, oh, 0.5 right there, just hit it. Okay, so I've got another coil too, I'll show you. I think that um, either my tester is off or their specs are off just by a hair because uh, the other known good coil tests test out basically the same, okay? So that is the uh, primary side of the coil test, okay? So the next, the secondary, I'm gonna have to remove the spark plug boot and I'll, I'll do that next. Okay, so for this next one, I've got the uh, lead clamped onto that spade there. Okay, so what we need to test here, uh, let's see. Okay, with the cap install, installed, we're basically talking about 11.3 uh, thousand ohms. Okay, with the cap removed, we're at, uh, approximately 6300 ohms 
And if you look over on the diagram itself, it kind of gives you both as well. So the way they're coming up with that is uh, 6300 without the cap. And then the, the cap itself is 5,000 ohms, okay? So I've got the uh, one tester tested on the spade here. Okay, let's see here if we can see I've got my uh, magneto cover, my footwell all back together from the previous job. Let's see if we can get this in here. You want to make sure you're touching metal. And you've got to dial your uh, tester up also. Our time reaching it. Okay, so we are at 11.1. It's supposed to be 11.3. Again, we're talking about uh, thousands. Okay, so we're we're within range. I'm pretty sure there's a tolerance there. Okay, let's just remove the cap real quick, and I'll show you. We'll just test the uh, coil itself without the cap. Okay, so this basically pulls right off or winds off. Now you want to be careful with these. This is something I didn't know until a year or so ago is this actually has a resistor in it. Uh, hence the reason uh, you, you've got 5,000 ohms of resistance on it. And we'll just test the coil itself. And I should have the other still clamped on. And we're right at 6,000 ohms. It's supposed to be uh, 6.3 thousand or 6300 so I'm a little low on that resistance okay but what I can do is I'll show you a new uh, a known good coil here when we're done but let's just test the cap real quick all right so let's test the cap it should be at uh, 5,000 ohm so we don't need to mess with the uh, settings on the tester here you need to make sure you're hitting metal in there Okay, so it's dead on. Okay, because remember we have the the uh, tester dialed up, so 5,000 ohms on that. So my my coil was a, a hair low. Okay, so those are all all things you can do to diagnose your wheeler. And unfortunately, there's a whole uh, a second page, but this is sort of that electrical portion, and this is a good way to sort of point you in the direction now look all right so just for the sake of follow through here's another coil i got this for twenty dollars on ebay with the cl with the cap and the cap um was was bad on mine uh and i was taking a chance on the coil with the cap i assume probably the coil was bad it was new old stock but it ended up being that the coil was good so i've got a good coil spare with a bad cap so let's see where we're at here i'm right at six with this coil also so I'm not overly concerned uh, that my the existing coil in my machine is, is only at 6 because here's another coil that also shows 6 and it's supposed to be 6.3 or 6300 ohms. So. Alright, so hopefully this video has been helpful. Uh, if you have a no spark situation on your uh, ATV or other vehicle, just uh, take a methodical approach, take your time. And remember that uh, the money you save by doing something like this yourself is probably going to more than pay for any tools or parts that you would need. Uh, so have fun. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave comments, and uh, if you want to see more of this type of thing, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.